Hi, I'm Kat. My name is Don. Hi, I'm Marley. My name is Demi. Hi, my name is Nicholas. I'm Stephen Hasten. My name is Mimo. I'm Kendra, and welcome, and welcome to Racist Online. Online. Welcome to the Barista League Online. My name is Erica Voni, and I'm going to be your host. For any of you who are new here, the Barista League is an event created for baristas by baristas, focused on community, accessibility, and sustainability. In normal times, their team hosts competitions and throws parties all over the world for coffee people to come together and have a great time. But this is the Barista League Online, a totally remote competition where baristas from all over the world applied to be a part of the chaos, competition, and fun by submitting application videos. The time has finally come to meet our first four competitors. These coffee pros will each be sent a series of challenges to complete in the coming weeks. Each challenge will test their skills, knowledge, creativity, and you get to watch it all go down. We've got guest judges, mystery ingredients, tasting challenges, and a whole bunch of surprises. So let's not waste any more time. As we speak, our first finalist is driving across the country from her former home in Denver, Colorado to her new home, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Let's welcome Coffee People Zine founder, world traveler, Kat Melheim. My name is Kat Melheim, and I am currently living in Denver, Colorado, though I'm moving tomorrow to Minnesota. I'm the founder and editor of Coffee People Zine. I've also been a barista and a roaster. I wanted to make something that was very applicable to current times and also having fun with it, but not like making fun of it. I tried to pick elements of the coronavirus recommendations I decided okay how could I how could I brew from six feet away because that's the recommended you know safe social distance that's video was so fun it was like taking this quarantine idea and putting it into brewing a coffee as soon as I saw it I was just like on, on the floor I liked it because she was making fun of this madness <laughs> and I liked it <laughs> great I really enjoyed it her just embracing, doing something absurd. I love absurdity and whimsy, so she she was nailing that. I was thinking, okay, even if I'm brewing from six feet away, I have to touch the coffee grind. So I have to sanitize the coffee grind, obviously. So I decided to do the bloom with, with alcohol. And then I was thinking that it was gonna taste terrible. So I also bought like shooters of vodkas that were the same flavor notes as the coffee that I was using. Honestly, it, it didn't taste great, but it didn't taste that bad. Also, I only used alcohol for the bloom, so it wasn't like all alcohol. It was only like maybe 30% alcohol at the, en at the end there. But if people wanna try it, be my guest. We're gonna get to know Kat a little bit more later, but now it's time to go to Belfast in Northern Ireland for our next competitor. Three-time multidisciplinary Irish champion and the pioneer of what we're calling the Tower of Power. Welcome, Stephen Houston. My name's Stephen Houston. I, I live in Belfast, Northern Ireland, and I'm the head roaster for Bailey's Coffee. So, about that application video. My inspiration for coming up with the four brewers, one cup um, was kind of one of those things, like I have a load of brewing equipment and I always have this kind of like ponder moment in the morning when I open the cupboard. I'm like, oh, like what do I want? Do I want a clever dipper? Do I want a clay dip? It, it started off more like, can I construct something that will like be sturdy enough that if I pour water through it or that it won't fall over? Because I was really worried I'd be like, Hi everyone, and then just like crashed everywhere, and I was like, "Ah oh, shit." He looked like coffee nut. In Kenyan coffee, I related with him very well. I couldn't even imagine how clear that coffee would be. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, uh, it was one of my favorites. No, I really liked the adventure of that one, and he just was like, "Ah, it's it's gonna be fine. Like not making a big deal, you know." He's just doing something crazy, but it's just another day. The competition was meant to be a bit of fun. It's got to have brewing on it, but like still a bit of seriousness, you know, seriousness to it. So I did try and like 
make it, make sure it could work. Uh, you know, it's a good thing there's no tasting notes on this or anyone judging it, but you know. <laughs> so there, it was just more, more a bit of fun and like more to see if we could do it. Like, could you, like now I'm kind of like, how many more brewers can I get? How many more, you know, it could get crazy. We loved it, Steven. Now let's meet our next competitor. She's an integral member of the Philadelphia coffee community, the architect behind the 2017 Philadelphia Wage Survey, and newly appointed to the Sprudge 20. Let's meet Kendra Slijinski. My name is Kendra Slijinski, and I live in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I am currently laid off from Joe Coffee Company, in which I work as an educator trainer, and overall, a lot of other things. Let's find out a little bit more about why Kendra chose to talk about making coffee brewing videos more accessible. My inspiration for creating my selection video was that I see all these brew videos that people are producing online from coffee companies and all I could keep saying is I'm like, you think that all your customers have gooseneck kettles and like Akaya scales? Hell no, most of them don't even have grinders. Like let's meet people where they're at. So Kendra is like part of the Philly community, it's just always like, welcomed me with open arms and welcomes everyone with open arms. Just her presence, her warmth, she's a warm person. You can feel that through the video. She gives so much of herself um, to support folks. Uh, I'm really excited to see what, how, what she does in, in this. If we're giving people this technical brewing information that's gonna go right over their heads, it doesn't really make them trust us as their specialty coffee purveyors. So if we can kind of like bring them along the journey and like start with baby steps. And I really wanted for people to be able to order a bag of coffee if they didn't have a grinder, grind it one way and be able to have a hot and a cold cup. Now it's time to meet our fourth and final competitor this week. Another former winner of the Barista League, this winner drove eight hours from Tallahassee to Greenville back in 2019 for what ended up being her first ever barista competition. Glittercat 2019 alumni, please welcome Demi Chacon. My name is Demi. I live in Tampa, Florida. I think my inspiration was Vine, just Vine videos. Um, I wanted it to be very like, like quick kind of. Um, I tried to edit it so that it was like never more than 10 seconds of the same scene. Um, so I, I just wanted it to be like really quick. And then I just didn't edit out any of the dumb jokes I made. <laughs> That was basically, I just brewed coffee and then didn't edit stuff out. I put 10. I, I, I was like, I had a huge grin on my face. It was like, <laughs> really nice. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's probably going to taste good. I don't care, but like, let's have some fun with brewing it. The way she moves and it just her personality that I love about her. She doesn't care about it at all. She's just like, yeah, I want to make coffee easy. Just do this, just do that and then drink it. That's it. I think it's good. <laughs> The process of actually making the video was, um, it was fun. I've always wanted to do stuff like that. So I made like a janky DIY tripod using an old selfie stick and like a beer bottle. <laughs> Probably just finding the right angles was the trickiest part because I was filming it alone. In just a second, we're gonna find out a little bit more about these four competitors. But first, we wanna thank our video sponsor. This video is supported by Pacific Foods Barista Series. Hi, I'm Steve Maloney and I founded the Bristol League. Now, something that we don't talk about very often is that running events for free is just not sustainable. You can do it for a time before you burn out, but finding partners that are willing to invest financially in you and your ideas is fundamental to the ongoing success of new projects and events. The support of partners like Pacific Foods has enabled us to make these events for you, but more than that, it's allowed us to focus all that energy that was going into stress streams and use it to create more events, engage people and work with amazing competitors and coffee people all over the world. You don't have to look far to find people that Pacific Foods have supported over the years and in the next few weeks we're going to get to meet a few of them. We love working with Pacific and we're super thankful that they help us deliver these projects to all of you. Thank you Pacific Foods, you rock! Now let's hear more about what our competitors have been up to. Accolades so far for competitions. I have won the Irish Brewers Cup back in 2017. I came third in 2018 and I won it again in 2019. I'm involved with uh, Brewers Cup. I'm on the US Brewers Cup committee. Jeez. I'm a current head judge Slurp. and I'm also a World Brewers Cup judge. Uh, and then I just recently competed in um, the US Brewers Cup and uh, like made it to nationals. I do have 
I forgot about this. I forgot about this. I won an award. Coffee People won an award. Uh, the best zine at the Denver Independent Comics Festival last year. I also won the Irish Aeropress Championships last year in 2019. I competed in the 2018 uh, Breeze League Tour and got first place in uh, Greenville and second place nationally. That was pretty cool. My teammate Sarah won the London edition of the Breeze League Minor Leagues. That's obviously the best one, you know. <laughs> Being part of the coffee community and I'm proud to be and I'm proud to stand up for baristas and try to make their lives easier and better by giving them positive work experiences. So that's my one and only accolade or award, but I'm very proud of it. Woo, an impressive bunch for sure, but everyone starts somewhere. So let's find out a little bit more about how these four superstars got hooked. I worked in coffee for five years. I was just in high school. Um, I had a couple jobs. I had like a job at a fast food restaurant. It was my first job. It sucked. I don't want to talk about it. And then I got a job at Starbucks and I've just been in coffee since then. Before I got into coffee, I had studied social work in, in college. Like after my education in that and then a couple years working in that, I just got very tired and lost a lot of hope and faith in not so much in people, but in the systems that were designed to take care of people. So I recognized I needed to take a step back from that. And that's when I got my first coffee job as a barista. I had that kind of epiphany moment where you, someone, you know, made me a coffee and they're like, oh, here, this will taste like blackcurrants. And I was like, you know, yeah, whatever. I don't believe this. And then I drank it and it tasted exactly like what they said. So that kind of blew my mind and then it just kind of started the kind of, I suppose the, I don't want to say downward spiral, but like the rabbit hole kind of into it. I worked at the Times Tribune in Scranton, Pennsylvania, which is where I grew up. I was missing the social aspect of the cafe and so I started working part-time and then I soon was working the opening shift at the cafe and then going right to work in the newsroom and eventually I was like, well, I like one of these more than the other. Sorry, newspapers, you're dying anyway. Okay, but let's not forget that this is, after all, a competition. Lucky for us, we have some pretty experienced competitors in this group. Let's find out more. When it comes to competition, it's like, I used to do competitive kickboxing, and I would say I get more nervous wheeling a trolley out to the World Brewers Cup stage than walking into a fight, which is kind of insane, because like, you're, you could get hurt. When, when I first got the, like, the email, I was like, oh yes, this is gonna be so much fun. And then I was like, wait, it's a competition. I gotta get my like game face on. The stakes are high, I wanna win this thing. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's going to be a little chaotic. Have y'all been preparing? Uh... No. <laughs> I've already been brainstorming. I, I've been racking my brains for ideas. I have so many ideas. I hope I don't start any fires. My goals are to have a good time, to learn something, and to like just experience it for what it is. But I really want to win this one. What an amazing group of people all coming together to battle it out for their chance to go on a dream coffee vacation. I, for one, can't wait to see what they come up with, and that's only half of them. Tune in next week, same time, same place, when we meet our final four competitors for the Barista League Online. Happy brewing!